The Las Vegas Raiders have officially released their former starting quarterback, Derek Carr. That means he is free to sign with any team immediately following his release. And today we're going to be talking about the idea of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers being a potential landing spot for Derek Carr. Joining me today, as he has done in most videos recently, is my colleague from BucksNation.com, the co-host of the Cannon Fire podcast and the main host of the Real to Real podcast, Mr. Evan Wanish. Evan, how you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me on for yet another video. I know I've been, like you said, I've been on most of them, so happy to be back. I'm keeping you busy, man. I really <laughs> am. You know, that's that's what we do over here. But listen, let's talk about Derek Carr, okay? I think that it is a pretty reasonable thing to say that his release is not surprising, right? Given his contract that he had, it was a pretty untradeable contract, all things considered, especially whenever you put into account that Derek Carr had a no trade clause in that contract. And there were reports that he was just flat out saying, no, I'm not going to be down for a trade. Release me, you cowards. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so just like you said, not surprising. You know, this was a move that was completely expected. Really, I mean, once once the Raiders benched him, you know, I mean, the Raiders benched him with two games to go um, and not even just benched him. It made him inactive, like he wasn't even around the team. So obviously um, it was pretty clear that these two, you know, sides weren't going to come together again for another season. So, uh, yeah, his release today wasn't surprising. Uh, I think a lot of people sort of expected him to be released because, like you said, uh, kind of wanting to maybe stick it to the Raiders, maybe you know, a little bit of ego there to say, like, hey, you basically gave up on me. Like, why would I allow you to get compensation for me? Like, no, you're just going to have to cut me and get nothing for me. So um, that may have been a little bit of play, a little bit of a role in, in Carr's decision because he could have very well accepted a trade, but, but he chose not to. And, you know, there were reports of there was trade compensation conversations between teams that were interested in the services of Derek Carr. But like you said, you know, maybe it's Carr sticking it to the Raiders. Such a weird situation over there. Again, we don't cover the Raiders here, but such a weird situation that now they are faced with not having a starting quarterback period right now after the release of Derek Carr. I don't think Jared Stidham is going to be that guy over there in Las Vegas. So they're going to have to figure out that out. They created a question for a question mark for themselves. So, Really weird situation over there in Las Vegas, but Derek Carr is now going to be available. And before we talk about the possibility of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers being a potential landing spot for Carr, Evan, I want you to kind of dive in a little bit as to who Derek Carr is as a quarterback, because I think out of all the options that would be available in free agency, not necessarily the trade market, because then you get into guys like Aaron Rodgers and stuff like that, but the trade market, or sorry, the free agency market, uh, Carr's probably one of, if not the best guy available in terms of pure talent and ability throwing the football, right? Yeah, I would say if you're looking at just the free agent market, um, yeah, I, I, well, I mean, that's assuming that we are assuming Lamar Jackson is not available because Lamar Jackson is technically scheduled to be a free agent. Like technically he's a free agent, um, but it all signs point to, you know, if he's on a different team, the Ravens are just going to most likely franchise tag him and then trade him. Like he's not going to make it to the market. So assuming he doesn't make it to the market. Yeah. You're looking at Derek Carr, I, I think is clearly the best quarterback. Um, I actually think there might be a little bit of a, a pretty big gap there. Um, between Carr and the next best guy, whoever you think that may be. Uh, and, and I do think that he's he's a guy who has struggled a bit the past few seasons. I'm not going to lie, especially this past season, obviously, with getting benched. Uh, the Raiders had pretty high expectations, especially with getting Devontae Adams and stuff, and those expectations weren't met. But he's also had a pretty productive career when you look at um, – you know, some of the things he's had to deal with, some not great defenses he's played with, um, some not great offensive lines. He's always had some pretty good skill positions. Uh, but also the Raiders have gone through a lot of turmoil and stuff. I mean, Carr had three head coaches while he was there. Uh, the whole John Gruden thing with that whole, you know, debacle. And then Josh McDaniels coming in, um, you know, but he was really good under Jack Del Rio. And that 2016 season, Carr was getting legit MVP buzz before he went down with injury. So it's unfortunate that he wasn't able to play in that playoff game. 
in 2016 because who knows, you know, how far the Raiders go. I mean, they were on a roll at that point. So I think in, in car, you're getting a above average, you're getting a good starting quarterback. Now, can he win you a Super Bowl? I mean, the evidence right now says no, but like that also doesn't mean he can't get it done. I mean, we've seen guys that didn't really win much with their previous stops, like Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford went on to win a Super Bowl with the Rams. So, um, you know, I I think Carr could definitely be a guy who can take you to the playoffs consistently and with the right pieces around them could lead you to a Super Bowl. Of course, one of the biggest things to factor into any possibility of the Buccaneers, you know, being a landing spot for a guy like Derek Carr is level of interest from other teams and price tags. And Evan, we've talked about this in the past throughout this offseason already. The Bucks are in some salary cap trouble. As of the recording of this video on February 14th, happy Valentine's Day to everybody, I suppose, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are still negative $55 million in cap space. Now, with Carr being released, hey, that does make him cheaper because you don't have to pay him $33 million in year one and $40 million in year two and year three. But... There has been reports of teams interested already in Carr. You look at the New York Jets. You look at the New Orleans Saints. He's already had two visits with the New Orleans Saints. Evan, where do you see a price tag for Carr? Where do you see other teams being interested in terms of levels of interest and what those teams may be? And ultimately, do you think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would be able to afford a guy like Derek Carr, given the right circumstances? Well, to answer that last question first, they can absolutely afford him. Um, him being released puts the chances of him being a Buccaneer up um, higher. Obviously not like skyrocketing, but it, it's higher than if you were to have been traded. Because what you can do, the Bucs can afford almost, <laughs> they can afford anyone they want. Like it, it just, it all depends on how far they're willing to go to push money down the line. So with Carr, yeah, a price tag, I would say it's probably in the range of 25 to $30 million a year. Um, I, I think that's that's fair. Now, is that his 2023 cap hit? Probably not, especially if he's playing for the Buccaneers. Because what the Bucs would be able to do is since he's a free agent now, you can sign him and you can put that money, let's say it's a four or five year deal, you can spread that cap hit around the different years to lower his cap hit so much in 2023 that you can afford other pieces and you're, you're not digging yourself a hole. So, I mean, if the bucks really wanted to, yeah, they could afford them. Uh, it just all depends on, like I said, how much money are they willing to put down the line? How much are they willing to kick the can down the road? And they also have to determine is car worth that it's worth it with a guy like Tom Brady. I would argue it's worth it with a guy like Lamar Jackson. But is it worth it with a guy like Derek Carr, who, like I said, is a good quarterback? I, I don't think Carr's a great quarterback. So is it really worth the potential salary cap issues you could have when trying to sign guys like Devin White or Antoine Winfield Jr. or Tristan Wirfs in the future? Um, or even, I mean, I know they just signed deals, but it was three-year deals. Carlton Davis, Chris Godwin, guys like that. Like, is it worth potentially risking losing those players to add Carr now? So I think that's something the Bucks will have to weigh. Can they afford him? Yeah, they absolutely can. But is it likely that they're going to want to kick the can down the road as much as they would have to to be able to get that done? I'm not sure. Sure. And, and when you do look at some other teams that are interested, right, that's another thing that could be detrimental to the Bucks right now. And I think the Bucks with Carr are a team that is ready to compete. Right. I think that we both agree on that. They're a team that could win the NFC South and make a potential playoff run. Is that a fair thing to say? I mean, I think they probably would win the NFC South, um, right. you know, uh, and who knows what happens in the playoffs. You know, it would, it would depend on that would probably depend on what else they would do with the roster. Um, but, yeah, I think they would definitely be the the favorites to win the South. Sure. And like I've seen the doom and gloom from people in comments before. Right. The Bucks aren't a terrible team all around. OK, they still have talent. And if you get a good quarterback, a guy like Derek Carr, you can be competitive. But I say that to say this, there are going to be other teams that are going to be interested in Derek Carr that could also be very logical, even more favorable landing spots. Not necessarily because the Buccaneers are just a downright terrible team and, oh, they're, they would just be, it doesn't matter because we're a terrible team. Why would Derek Carr want to come to a terrible team? Nothing along those lines, right? 
It's more so of previous connections and relationships. I said that he visited with the Saints twice. Evan, do you know why that is the case? Is because Derek Carr's former head coach, Dennis Allen, is there with the New Orleans Saints now as their head coach. So I think that makes a lot of sense as to why he visited twice, huh? Yeah, there's there's familiarity there. Um, and then of the teams that were listed, kind of, that's two, two teams in the NFC South, the, the Saints and Panthers. Now, to be fair, personally, I think it makes zero sense for the Panthers. Um, Saints, Saints, I, I think, is a little different. Uh, they don't have a top 10 pick like Carolina does. The Saints can't easily acquire a young franchise quarterback, but the Panthers can. So I, I don't see why the Panthers would look into that. Um, but obviously, the Jets and Saints make a lot of sense. And look, and that goes back to my point of can the Bucks afford them? They absolutely can. And my evidence is even pointing to the Saints are the only team in the NFL that has less cash space than the Buccaneers do. So, and the Saints are were interested in, in acquiring him and are still interested in signing him. So, yes, that shows you the Buccaneers can afford him because the Saints are finding out a way to do it. So, um, yeah, I do think that with that, it, it might not matter, you know, like – how attractive destination the Bucks are, or the Bucks even interested in Derek Carr. Like I said, there's ramifications to everything. If you want to add Derek Carr, you're going to have to say goodbye to some pieces. And I think they're going to have to weigh that right now. And, and I think that's what they're, they're currently doing. We'll see folks. Look, this is going to be an interesting thing. Um, an interesting situation to pay attention to. So let's just kind of all sit along for the ride again. I just want to say this car can sign with a team. At any, any, point. any point, yes. Any yes. point. It's different than just having your contract expiring and then you sign at the start of the new league year. Completely different situation. If you're released, you can go anywhere. Okay, that's a pretty big difference. I just learned that myself this past week, thanks to Evan, actually. So, <laughs> and, and and one thing I will say, uh, one last point is this may have been even more likely for the Buccaneers uh, before that Tom Brady retirement filing. Uh, if the Bucks were able to save $24 million on their cap this year, that would have helped. Now they're most likely eating all $35 million. So um, that certainly makes an acquisition of a guy like the, uh, Derek Carr even more difficult. But again, we'll see. You never know, man. Hey. Never know. know. You never know. So we'll see. Let's pay attention to this one, folks. We'll see. Carr apparently may be taking his time as well with the process. Maybe he will visit the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We'll have to make another video talking about this. But anyway, folks, let us know your thoughts and opinions. Do you want Derek Carr as the starting quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Do you want the Buccaneers to be interested in signing him and eventually getting a deal done? Let us know your thoughts and opinions. We would love to hear them. Go check out Evan's work over at BucksNation.com. Go check him out over at the Can of Fire podcast whenever they do to finally decide to upload some new content over there and go check them out on the real to real podcast as well evan thank you so much for being on this video and everybody watching this video hope y'all enjoyed and as always folks we'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream but until then and as always guys goodbye for now and go bucks